Okay, this is going to be part two of the videos that we are doing about using the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate definite integrals. This is still connected to material from section 5.7. Uh, in this case, though, we're going to say what happens uh, if we try to evaluate an integral in perhaps two or more pieces by splitting up the limits of integration. Before we get to that, though, I'd like us to go ahead and try a question kind of as a warm-up and just see if, uh, how our skills are coming along. So let's try this integral. Let's try to evaluate the definite integral. This is from your book, by the way. It's number 6. And it's from 1 to 4. And it's the integral of 24 x to the 3 halves dx. Pause the video for just a minute and see if you can solve this particular integral. Okay, so now hopefully you've taken a minute to do that. And let's find out what the answer is going to be in this particular. In this case, uh, there's a couple things that we can do to make the integrals easier. For example, we can take the 24, which is a constant, and instead of writing it as part of the integrand, we can write it in front of the integral symbol, right there. And eventually, once we calculate the integral's value, we're just going to multiply it by 24. That's going to simplify our lives a little bit. And so now we have this much simpler power function that we're going to integrate. So now we have the 24 times this integral. Well, it is a power function, which means that we can simply increase the exponent on x by 1. And we can, this should be a 5 halves up here. And then we can divide by that same 5 halves, or 2.5. This also means we could take 24, oops, I forgot my limits of integration here. They're going to be from 1 to 4. We can take the 24 times x to the 5 halves times the reciprocal of this fraction in the bottom, which is 2 fifths. We're going to have that entire thing evaluated from 1 to 4. Okay, so if I now take my uh, function here, I've got the 24 and the 2 fifths can get multiplied together, so we're going to have 48 fifths times x to the 5 halves evaluated from 1 to 4. Okay, it took a while to clean that up, but now what we're going to end up with is we're going to have 48 fifths times, well, we're going to have 4 to the 5 halves power minus 1 to the 5 halves power. So if you remember your rules for exponents, and by the way, this would make a really great non-calculator AP question. Uh, we're going to have 48 fifths, and now we're going to take the square root of 4, that's the 2 in the exponent right here, so we're going to have the square root of 4, that's 2, 2 to the 5th power is 32, minus, and here we're going to have 1, and 1 to any power is just 1. So we are now going to have 48 fifths times 31. Nothing's going to cancel in that particular case, so we're just going to have to multiply the two numbers together and divide by 5, and we're going to get about 297.6. Not a very nice integral, but that's what it is. Okay? Um, now, what we're going to do next is we're going to try an integral. In this case, um, it's going to be much simpler. And I'd like you to stop the video here in just a minute and evaluate the following three integrals. The first one is going to be from 1 to 3 x dx. Erase that there. x dx. And then I want you to also evaluate the integral from 3 to 5 of the same x dx. And then evaluate the integral from 1 to 5 of x dx. So go ahead and stop the video and evaluate those three integrals. All right, so you should have evaluated the three integrals by now. The top integral you end up with 
as a value of 4. The second integral, you should have gotten a value of 8. And the third integral, a value of 12. Hopefully that doesn't seem terribly surprising. And especially if you look at these two pieces right here, you might notice a connection between them and the piece down here. That is not a coincidence that 4 plus 8 adds up to 12. Let's kind of see physically, if we can, what's going on in this case, and that might be helpful to us. So let me go ahead and put a version of the graph on screen that we need here. So let's see. A little bit bigger. Okay, so if you'll notice, this is the graph of just x, y equals x. And if we were integrating as we were initially from 1 to 3, we would be looking at the area from 1 to 3. And you can see that's four whole squares, and then two half squares, and there's our total of four. If we then go from 3 to 5, that would take us the rest of the way to the edge of our graph here. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2 halves make 8. The total for the entire region would be all of these pieces added together, which is where we're getting our area of 12. And what that's going to allow us to do then is to say, if we take the integral of a function over a, a series of limits of integration, we can also split that up and integrate over smaller pieces and add those results together, especially when we come up with situations where some of those integrals turn out to have negative values. That's going to be relatively important to us. So let's think about it this way. Um, let's say we were trying to evaluate this function. This one might surprise you just a little bit. Try this integral. The integral from negative 2 to 2 of x cubed dx. Try that one out and see what you come up with. Okay, if you did this one correctly, you may think you have a wrong answer, but you probably don't. In this case, we actually end up with the integral being equal to 0. Now that might surprise you a little bit, but if you look at a graph of this particular function, you might actually be able to see why it's this, case, this way. So I'm going to erase a little bit here. I'm going to add in the graph that we need. Here it is. And remember that this is the graph of x cubed, and all we're looking at here is we're looking at the area from negative 2 here to positive 2, which is over here. And if you think about it, we could kind of carve this up into two pieces. We could look at the area from negative 2 to 0, which would be everything in this area here. And then we could also look at the other area from 0 to positive 2, which would give us this region right here. You might notice that these two regions are related to each other. In fact, they're identical. They're exactly the same, except that one region from negative 2 to 0 is entirely below the x-axis, and the other region from 0 to 2 is entirely above. And so essentially what happens is that these two areas cancel themselves out. So if we were to evaluate the integral from, say, 0 to 2, and then the integral from 0 to negative 2, we would get exactly the same number. I should say from negative 2 to 0. We would get the same number, only one would be negative and one would be positive. As we move forward, there's going to be one other thing that we're going to say about this graph, and that is what we call an odd function. There's going to be another video that's going to talk about odd and even functions and what their integrals uh, are like, because there are some really useful things that we can know about odd and even functions and how their integrals behave.